Hi, so if you've started using React for your front-end web dev, sooner or later you'll run into something called React hooks. And if you've not used them before, the first time you use them, you may want to Google them. And if you do that, you will get this nice definition which says, look, hooks are the new features, 16.8 version. It allows you to use state and other React functions without writing a class, functions which hook into the React state, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is all very correct, of course, but if you've never used them before, they can be a little overwhelming. Why are they called hooks? What are they hooking into? What is the React state? And what are lifecycle features for that matter? And, and, and what are functional components, for example? You might not be familiar with some of this terminology. And uh, so you, you, you can get to all this stuff, but if you just want to understand hooks at a very practical coding level, then this is the part to focus on that hooks are functions. In fact, I'll just go so far as to emphasize this and say, look, React hooks are just functions. There's nothing else and you already know how functions work. And in this video, I just want to demystify hooks by focusing on a couple of uh, hooks. We'll use the uh, use state hook and the use effect hook, which are just functions. And we'll approach them from a very practical coding perspective with a simple example, and hopefully get a real good feel for when and how to use them. So I've set up a simple example here. Again, this is not a video about how to use React from scratch. So I'm assuming you already know React a little bit. And so I'm gonna focus only on the uh, scenarios in which uh, these hooks are useful. So I've set up a simple component here, which basically is using a simple div. And these classes, by the way, are coming from Tailwind. If you're not familiar with Tailwind, it's okay. I mean, you can still understand the example because these are just for formatting and you can use your own classes if you like. The main part is that it consists of two divs right now. The first div says, hello world, click here. It has an on click handle called handle click. So as soon as you click on this, it'll hopefully go here. And this particular variable counter which is defined over here will be updated. And then we have a second div in which we say, you clicked plus counter plus times. And what we're hoping is that as soon as you click this over here, the text display will change here, telling you how many times you've clicked. So it's a fairly straightforward example. And of course, not gonna work because of the reasons we'll just see, but let's see what it looks like. And so if you come here, uh, indeed it says, hello world, click here, and you clicked zero times, which is correct. These are from previous runs, so let me clear that. Now, if I click here, uh, as I mentioned, nothing is going to happen because we have not set it up correctly yet because uh, the state is not being maintained. And so, you know, the first step that if you run into the scenario, you might want to do is you say, look, the counter is getting incremented. So let's just have a console log here. So I'm just going to do a console.log here. And it says uh, clicked, just to say that it's clicked and counter is, and then you just tack on the counter value. And we just want to see if the counter actually is being incremented at all or not. And if we do it like this, and if we come back here, now if I click it, you see in the debugger, in the debug console, that the counter is one. So the counter is indeed going up, but this element is still not updating, right? So our logic is correct. We are in fact calling the on click function, the click is displayed, <clears throat> but it is not updating the second div that we want to update. So uh, we are going from here to here. This line is working. This is telling us that it is working, but this div right here has no way of knowing, even though it's using the same variable, as you can see, that is being used in this function defined here, there is no way for this particular div to, to sort of know that the variable has changed. And so it doesn't update itself. And this is where the first of our two hooks come in. And this one is called the use state hook. So to use the use state hook, which is the first one we're gonna use, we will first have to import it. Let me just do that right now. Uh, let's just say import use state and that imports it. And now the first change we're gonna make is that we are going to replace this variable with a special variable through the use state function that we just imported, right? And so it's still a variable, so var, but this is actually a pair of variables and they are in an array, so square brackets, and we still call it counter, although it can be anything we like, counter, and then it pairs up with something called set counter, which is a function in fact, and both of them are equal to use state zero. So what's going on over here? Use state, like I promised, it's a hook, but it is, like I promised, a function. <clears throat> and you can tell that it's a function because it has the usual signature. It has parentheses in front of it. It takes an initial value or a parameter called zero. And what it returns is a pair of things, right? So it is a function which returns A, a variable, and B, a function. The first thing it returns is a variable. And this variable, in some sense, is no different from this variable over here. Uh, it will just be an integer variable and we will be able to change its value if we want. But then it also returns something called set counter, which is a function which should be used to update its value. Uh, and we'll come to that in a second. But for now, we are using the hook. And if I just save it right now, 
like so. Because it is now coming from the use state, you would expect it to work, but does not work just yet, right? So the clicks are still getting counted, but this div is not getting updated. Uh, the reason it's not getting updated is once you start using the use, use state hook, then if you want to change these variables, they are variables in the conventional sense, right? You can still use counter plus plus, and as you can see, the value is still changing. You can see it in the console. But if you want these changes to be reflected in the rest of your code, then rather than changing them directly, this is where the second parameter comes in. This was returned to us by the use state function, or use state hook if you like. And what it's saying is, look, if you ever want to change this companion variable that I gave you, use this function instead. Don't, don't do it manually. And so we say set counter because it's a function brackets. And then we say counter plus one. So it's the same thing, but this time we are using this to set it rather than setting it directly. And just by making this simple change, if I save it now, I go back to the code and let's start from the beginning. If I click here now, voila, now <laughs> the second div is updating. So that's basically what your uh, use state uh, hook will do. Now again, notice that we have not changed this div in any way. It is exactly the same. It is still using a variable called counter. Uh, we have not had to touch it. There's no function calling here. There's no on click on this one. But just because this counter variable is now a variable which was returned by the use state, and it was updated by the function which was returned by use state, just because these two things, every time it changes through the set counter function, it will get updated everywhere in your code wherever it is getting displayed. And that's the beauty of this hook, right? You have to, you can stop worrying about maintaining state and making sure that you know it's updated all over. You could be using it in 10 different places and all of them will get updated automatically as soon as you do that, right? Um, and so that's basically your first hook. And uh, now there's something interesting about this hook, which is that if you look closely, and let me just start again, refresh the page, you know, uh, you will notice that if I click here, it says counter is equal to zero. Whereas it here it says counter has been clicked one time. So that's interesting, isn't it? Let's try this again. Click again, counter is one, whereas in fact it is two. So what's going on here? Let's understand. This is important because it throws off a lot of people. So let's just slow down and understand this properly. This is important. So clearly we are uh, using the set counter function before the console log. So whatever the new value is, it should logically get displayed over here, but it is not getting displayed over here it is getting displayed correctly in the component. And the reason is that anything that is, uh, the function that is returned by use state, which is the function over here, the set function, is asynchronous in nature. So it is not run immediately. There is a slight microsecond, millisecond delay before it is run. In fact, we have no control over it. We can, we can tell the framework that this is to be updated and then it will decide the timing of it. And what's happening is that it actually goes past this line because it's asynchronous and runs this line first. And then perhaps a split second later, uh, this line gets executed, which is why you get the old value in the console because the console statement gets run first and then the actual update happens after that and so you get it. But the, the div is updated only when the counter has been updated. And so the div displays it correctly, but the console log displays it slightly incorrectly. So this is one of the things that you have to be watchful for, that these state use state variables, they are being set asynchronously. And so how do we find out when it has actually been updated, right? So we might want to do something else when it is updated. We might want to run, for example, another function uh, after the variable value has changed. It could be a logic function. For example, every time it changes, we might want to call a RESTful API and grab some data or whatever it is. Uh, that problem has not been solved yet, and that's where the next hook comes in, and that's called the use effect hook. So now let's bring in the other hook, <clears throat> start by importing it. This one is called use effect. And the first thing, of course, to do is to import it, use effect, effect right here, and that does it. And we're going to introduce a new function here. I'm just going to type it out here real quick using a snippet because it's a little bit of a handful. So use effect. It has this uh, format, but you can use the shortcuts to do it quickly. But basically, you know, it has a function within it and it has an array as a second parameter, all right? And what the array does is it, it, it takes a variable name, which is also a state variable. So in this case, it is counter, which he was just using. And what we're saying is, look, every time the counter changes, as an effect of that, what do you want to happen? Does that make sense? Right? So we saw that it is being set asynchronously, so we don't have any control over here. We, we, we don't wait for it to happen in this line of code. This just moves on, and so we, we can't do anything after it has been updated. But after it has been updated, we are guaranteed that it will run the use effect hook because the second parameter we are saying, look, every time the, con the counter variable is updated, as an effect of that, if you will, 
run the code in this function over here, right? And so we can do anything we like over here. And so over here, for example, all I'm gonna do is do a console log, but this time I'm just gonna say in use effect. And uh, I'm just gonna say, let's say counter is, and again, I'm just gonna dump the counter value over here as well. And uh, plus counter, okay? So, and we just save it like this, and that's, that's all we're changing. And by doing this, if I now go back to our code, again, let's just start from the top. Uh, refresh the page and if I start clicking it right so the first thing you notice is that it's already been run once and I'll talk about why this is happening because you know we have not changed the counter yet but as soon as I reload the page it runs once initially right so we'll get to that in a second but for now let me just click it and you find out that the clicked counter is zero but in the use effect hook the counter is one as it should be because in the display also it is one let's try that again so click it again so it says yes it has been clicked but the counter in that function is still equal to one as we saw previously. This is because of the asynchronous nature of the call. But in the use effect hook, which is guaranteed to happen only after that state variable has been changed because it is the effect of that variable, it is being set correctly, right? And so you can go on like this. And so basically these sort of form a pair. And essentially what's happening is if you want to just update a screen element like a div or, or any other uh, HTML uh, co uh, sorry, display, then you're okay with the use state hook and you don't have to do anything else. You just use the set counter which was returned to you by the use state and all the visual elements will, will update. But if you want to run some logic, in this case, the logic is just you know doing a console log, it could be anything else. If you want to run some function or some piece of code only and only after this function has been correctly and safely executed and the new value is in the counter variable, if you want to do that, then you will use something called the use effect hook, give it the value of that variable, and then it is guaranteed that this code will only run after the uh, value has been updated. Every time it's updated, this will be run. And so in a way, it is the side effect or the effect of updating a state variable, which is captured in the use effect uh, hook. I hope this is gonna make sense. Also, just to get it out of the way, the first one happens because this is just the way the use effect hook is built, is that as soon as the paste page first renders, whether the variable has changed or not, the use effect hook is always run at least once. That's uh, at the time of the first generation of the page. In fact, if I take this counter thing out of here, right? And if I just run it like this, and again, let's just reset everything here. If I reload the page, it still runs once and the counter is one. But now if I click it again, it is not running again, right? Because, and that's because I've taken it out of this array. And so the first run is because of the first page load. And all subsequent runs are only happening because if it finds it in the array of variables. And you can have more than one array, uh, sorry, variable over here as well. And this can be slightly confusing, but it's also very, very useful. Sometimes you want to run something when the page is first loaded. And so use effect is often used like this without anything in the angle, in the square brackets over here. And that's just so that when the page first loads, it will uh, it will update that. And actually you can have more than one use effect in the same, uh, in the same uh, file. So you can have another one over here. And I'll just do this one. And then this one, I will now have the counter, uh, counter variable uh, as a dependency, right? So this one is gonna run only once when the page first load. And so we'll call this uh, in use effect. And we'll, let's just call this in the blank, if you will, use effect. And I'm gonna get rid of this because this does not apply here. This will run, we'll see in a minute, just once. And the second one uh, in the counter use effect, if you will, this is gonna run over and over again, right? So let's just demonstrate that as well. Starting from the top, page first load, it says in the blanks use effect. So this is only happening because the page is loaded. And in the counter use effect, the counter is zero. This is happening because this is also happening right now because the page is loaded, but this one is gonna keep on happening while the first one, so the blank use effect doesn't never happens again, but the counter use effect happens every time the counter variable changes, right? So these two sort of go in a pair and uh, that's basically your use effect variable, right? So just to recap, React hooks are just functions. These are special functions provided by the framework. They all start with the name use something, but they are just functions. They will return us some things or they will run at certain times. That's determined by the framework, but they are just functions, nothing to be afraid of. And the way to distinguish these two, func uh, these two hooks is if you wanna make something happen when a variable changes, then if you want to update a screen element only, you're gonna use the use state hook because this will give you back the variable and a function to update that variable. And if you use that function to update it, all screen references to that variable will automatically get refreshed, no problem. But if you want to run a function when, some, when a variable changes, 
then you can use the use effect hook, right? And that's sort of the way to think about the uh, these two hooks. Now, these two are the most common used hooks in React. There are other hooks as well. The, the third most common used in my experience is use context, but that's a bit more involved and we're gonna cover it here, maybe in a future video. And uh, hopefully this made sense to you and you are a little bit more comfortable using React hooks uh, in, your, uh, in your React coding, in your web dev. And with that, happy coding.